Boom, according to that, I am live. Welcome, this is Tokyo Tonight. Uh, it's 10.30 p.m., 10.34 p.m. Japan Standard Time, 8.34 a.m. in Panama. Thank you, Shibas, for sharing that. And welcome, everybody, who uh, made it along every week, especially on short notice. I admit I was a bit distracted by the Tokyo um, election results happening at the moment. Most of it are just curious than anything else. I'll share what's going on with that, including latest results, which are interesting. I don't know if I can actually share it very well on this screen. I feel like, let me see if I can pull this off to a side screen. Hmm, maybe I can find a good way to sort of share this and updates during the show. At the moment, boom, 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 boom. so yeah, if I come over here, there are basically 80 seats left out of 127 up for election. And um, what's sort of interesting is you've got this red line Jiminto, which is basically expected, uh, currently has 25 seats, and uh, Tomin, which is sort of the, the, the Koike's personal party, expecting that one to collapse. Uh, but so far, actually holding up pretty well, actually, um, at least matching LDP. Um, so it will be interesting to see how things go through the evening, so I'm going to keep one eye on that anyway. Um, but that said... Um, yeah, in fact, probably by the end of the show, the results will be pretty much finalized. So I'll be talking about that. Of course, some interesting stuff with vaccinations and whatnot this week. Um, the Olympics starting, I don't have much stories about that other than, of course, I think they found someone from the Serbian team. So now the Serbian and Ugandan teams have both had athletes which uh, which have coronavirus. But that said, it is what it is. There isn't much that can be done at this point. But um, yeah, hope you're all good. Um, I'm good. I, I, I got I managed to book a work vaccination last week, but it, it got cancelled partly because of what I'm about to talk about with the uh, I'm not sure if it was actually the, 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 the national government's fault or just logistics and stuff like that. But uh, I also got my voucher. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to sort out one way or another a, a vaccination in the, in the near future, which I'm looking forward to. But yeah, it's uh, definitely rainy season has now hit in Tokyo. I know you've been having crazy weather in North America, particularly uh, British Columbia, Vancouver. It's hard to think. I was in Vancouver this time of year a couple of years ago, and it was lovely and cool. Um, 49.6 degrees in like that area near Vancouver is just unimaginable. And, and hearing from people in the Pacific Northwest of America as well, um, of the USA, just how like... Not only is it terrible because it's like in the mid-40s, but also no one there has air conditioning. It would be like uh, 45 degrees in New Zealand, like, you know, just, just completely not equipped for it. So I know for those of you in that part of the world, I know you're having a tough time. Here in Japan, um, I don't actually have coverage tonight of the landslide in Atami. Um, but uh, yeah, that that's unfortunately... Um, a big part of being in Japan is the extreme weather. So, um, yeah, we've had non-stop rain here in Tokyo. Fortunately, Tokyo isn't really at risk of landslide. What generally happens in big urban areas in Japan, um, when I got to Japan, it was sort of like in New Zealand, people love to build places that are right beside the ocean, like you have a higher value if you're right beside the sea. Or if you're on a hill and you've got a lovely view, your house will have higher value. So I couldn't understand why does Japan not have like houses on hills and why does it build these massive levees and obstruct the ocean from view um, where I'd like to surf? Um, you know, or the, sort of the opposite of intuition. And then, of course, I saw my first uh, earthquakes and tsunamis in Japan and realized, oh, that's why they build levees and why they don't want to build houses right on the ocean. And then uh, with these landslides, which happen frequently, Japan is very mountainous. Um, yeah, you can see that Japan has the experience with these things that uh, when when you build a city, uh, you just make it flat. If there is a hill, you bulldoze it flat because uh, between earthquakes and typhoons and, um, you know, torrential rain for long periods of time like we're having right now in Shizuoka that led to that. Um, yeah, yeah, the, you know, you can't make anything perfectly safe, but this is just what people do in Japan. And it kind of makes sense. And it kind of also makes me think as a biased Tokyoite. That, yeah, maybe people in a place like Japan are supposed to live in the cities. I mean, the country towns are lovely. And Atami in particular, I've been to. It's, it's an onsen town. So, you know, you can't say they shouldn't be there. And those houses, the, the, those, you know, hills are full of onsen and, um, you know, boars and so on. It's like Rotorua, um, New Zealand's Rotorua here in uh, Japan. So, you know, it's I kind of get why it's there. But still terrible that just to, to see the video as well. Amazing now everyone has a smartphone. So, you know, fortunately or unfortunately... You don't just have to hear about it. You know, for everything you hear about how terrible mudslides are, to actually see one in multiple videos and see, wow, that looks just like the tsunami like uh, from a few years ago. 
um, pretty awful and makes you realize just again how powerless people are for all the things that we can do. Uh, yeah, we're still pretty powerless with that stuff. So anyway, a lot, a lot going on in Japan this week. Let's dive into the comments, see who's there, say hello, and then see if we can dive into the, the, the topics and get through. Again, not too many topics, but we'll see how we go. Dan H, butter boom. Incoming, yes, good to have you in here. Not late, Shubas is on time. I was late and Shubas was early, so going to get a coffee, go do that. Yes, good to see you. Buenos dias uh, in Panama, good to have you with us. Go time, says Aaron. Yes, good to have you with us. Moderator and video editor extraordinaire. Like the sheep emoji, nice move, PB. Uh, Quinn Rankin, hello, good to see you. Uh, good to see the regulars. We've got uh, Mr. Cordy Chip, Shubas is early. Uh, the universe is disturbed. Uh, Andrea Mulway, boom, good to see you. Milchman too. Hey, you heard there's a party going on here. Hey, there's always, there's always a party going on here. This is the place to be. Tokyo 503, happy Independence Day to you, Yanks. Can I say Yanks? I think, well, how is that? How do Americans feel about being called Yanks? I, th I think it's okay. Uh, and indeed, happy happy Independence Day. The, the celebrating, of course, the historical moment that Will Smith um, punched an alien in the face. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I get confused nowadays. Oh, that reminds me. I watched Tomorrow War on Amazon. Uh, yeah. Uh, was it Tomorrow War? Yeah, Tomorrow War. I think it's called Tomorrow War. I don't know. It, it was dumb. I mean, it was Chris Pratt. It was it was OK. I mean, it was, it was it was like a Michael Bay type thing. It was definitely I was complaining about Tenet. Like I was cross eyed and completely confused after like five minutes of Tenet. I mean, I like to watch stuff that's like intellectually challenging, but not stuff that's just like, you know, holding you down and slapping you in the face like Tenet does. No problems of that with Tomorrow War. It was OK. It was actually, you know, it was, it was actually I think the best summary I read was on Rotten Tomatoes was it was basically like a video game. The whole thing was like a video game where they're very, you know, there's very little that's unpredictable. Um, there's a lot of great talent really not being put to the best use, but it was fun. It was fun. I, I'd give it like a two and a half stars out of five. Distracted, aren't I? Yes, I'll keep going through the, the welcomes. Uh, I think I've said hello to everybody so far, so far, so far. AV, 84K, a little bit late. Don't worry, I was a little bit late too. Good to have you in here. Cerberus, Cerberus Tenshi. I believe the Latin pronunciation is Cerberus, even though I think most English speakers say Cerberus because English is stupid. Uh, you too, no problem. Good to have you in here, uh, Kerberos Tenshi. Um, also, I see people saying, giving the times. Uh, thank you, Andrea Moboy. Uh, out tonight with a bunch of friends. Lucky you. Wow, I remember going out with friends. Uh, tomorrow, war was terrible. Yes, it was. All war is terrible. Um, but especially, uh, you know, <laughs> World War Z meets Starship Troopers. Well, World War Z wasn't that great, but it was better than Tomorrow War. Starship Troopers is a classic. Um, still surprises me how many people... Well, I think Starship Troopers is more appreciated now than it was at the time. I loved it at the time. I, I correctly understood it at the time, and I was surprised how many people didn't understand that Starship Troopers was a parody of fascism. You know, it was kind of like, what well, you know, well, space Nazis told in a positive way, but but being, you know, sort of subversive, right? And, and so many people didn't get that. There were so many people who, when you'd say, I love Starship Troopers, they would say, oh, I also love Starship Troopers, Starship Troopers. And I would say, yeah, I love the, the satire in it, you know, like the... And they were going, what Sato? <laughs> Be careful of those sorts of people. Starship Troopers, I think, is still one of the most awesome things ever. No, tomorrow, why? I bet I can't even remember it. I watched it yesterday. Um, so, you know, no, they, they I, I would say far beyond either of those movies. 270 AJ, good to see you. Uh, who else in here? We've got, uh, why torture yourself to watch the whole movie if it's that crappy early on? It's okay. Oh, you mean uh, Tenet? Yeah, I, I stopped. I actually stopped. And then I thought, well, I paid for renting it. So I came back to watch the rest of it. But then the rental period had ran out. So I paid for it again. And I watched the second half. And then I was really angry because I paid for it twice. And it was still rubbish all the way through the second half. Uh, but that's, yeah, Tenet was, <laughs> was a good lesson to be careful what you wish for. Dan H, did I check out the video about Japan tech? Why the Japan tech industry collapsed? Uh, yes, I did. I, I, I think I did. I, I, I used the words that you recommended, and it's actually, I'm going to talk about it in the topics tonight, Dan H. So, yeah, I've fully got you on that. 
Uh, guys, English Royal, good to see you. When you showed up 1036, you thought you were late, but I was actually I was actually talking about some news, but no, I'm actually now just talking about random stuff. I'll get into the news in a minute, don't worry. Um, you are never late, guys. English Royal, good to have you in here. Uh, Odie Jr., boom, happy American War of Treasonous Independence Day. Yes, indeed, uh, Treasonous Secession Day. Um, I must admit, you know, like... Uh, uh, it is kind of funny how like America became opposed to every, you know like Cuba and uh, all these other countries doing exactly the same thing as America did, uh, but at the same time it's kind of natural to me in a way. The only thing that's really mysterious is I mean of course America was going to rebel and become independent. It was the place where Britain sent all the people that hated the country the most. It was the transportation destination. Australia w was founded because America became independent uh, because both my New Zealand side and my Australian side come from Australia. Um, I don't think there, there, well, there has to be some people there who are transported. Just uh, I do have some of the family tree on uh, on that, but um, yeah, tr I would have been American if uh, America hadn't been independent. You know, my ancestors were <laughs> sent to Australia instead. But uh, it's kind of surprising to me that Australia, you know, um, it's funny, Australia has been fighting for like 200 years to be independent, but they've been fighting with each other first on how to become independent, never able to agree on that. So they've remained under the Queen as a result, which is kind of dumb. Um, New Zealand's never tried to be independent, by the way. So, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic, but certainly congrats to the Americans on actually ruling themselves, something that New Zealand still doesn't do. You know, we still actually uh, have the Queen as our head of state, which is uh, silly. So congrats, America. Um, I'm chasing a lot of squirrels, and we are 60 minutes in, so pull it together. Pull it together. Let's let's get into the start of this. We've got uh, Believe in Yourself. Good to see you. Uh, Andrew Hummel will ask for a refund. No, it's okay. I, I take that as a life lesson. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kerberos Ditch, I watched it twice, and I'm not watching it anymore. Uh, glad that you have butter. Quint Rankin, no, the American Revolution is different. A revolution to reestablish the law, not to overthrow it. Well, it's a self-serving definition, but, um, you know, um, the rest of the empire was under very much the same circumstances as America at the time uh, that, that America freed itself. And of course, they they framed it in terms of justice. But, you know, I mean, there's parts of America, you know, where people don't have voting rights, for example, um, you know, um, Puerto Rico, bigger than most states in America. Still shocks me, actually, how, how that works. But um, yeah, but, but all of that said, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm throwing rocks. It's uh, in the end of the day, the point is, is that uh, I think actually Australia and New Zealand and Canada and everyone should have done what America did, actually. America was absolutely right to have its re revolution. It's actually amazing that Britain like managed to control so much of the world for so long, but stop back on track. Starship, uh, Quint Rankins, everyone, has everyone here read Starship Troopers, the book? <laughs> anyone, has anyone? No, I haven't read the book, and I've, I've heard that the book is better than the movie. It's often the case, but um, no, I'm from Generation X, man, and I know that's close to being a boomer now at this point, but we, we you know, we, we liked four-minute, um, you know, MTV package things. I mean, nowadays, I think Gen Z, they're down to like 15 second TikToks, you know, the, the, the attention span has gone down like this, but we were, we were at the, the, definitely the end of the books phase. Um, yes, Barry Bonds, good to see you. Uh, Aaron Squirrel Life, yes, thumbs up. Is Butter still sensitive? Apparently not. Look at that. The, the algorithm seems to have chilled. It's wrecking. Maybe I'm not as triggered by it anymore. I, I don't know why it was censored in the first place, but, um, Yes, Foghart, good to, good to have you in the comments as well. Sergeant Bilko, yeah, Ninjin check, the, the carrot is working. Ed Avoid, good to have you in here. You've read the book, good, good on you. Um, couldn't rank it, I sound so violent today, all this talk of revolt. The fourth belongs to America, and uh, you have to get your own. Absolutely, no, absolutely. And by the way, Waitangi Day in New Zealand, um, you know, well, apart from the fact it doesn't represent independence of New Zealand because we're still not independent, and I think that that's stupid. No, I, I, I definitely um, pay much respect to America on July 4th. I really think, I repeat, I repeat, whole British Empire should have done what America did hundreds of years ago. So, uh, yeah, congrats to America. The book was so boring, says so Mr. Cordy Chip. Uh, okay, I think I've said hello to everyone. Let's dive into the topics. I said there's not much, but, uh, you know, you know how it goes. Um, also, I am on a five-minute timer because of the screen thing with all of this. So, Tokyo election tonight. Um, what is going on with that? Yeah, the, the results are flowing, and there are 64 left. So, I might come back to this at the end of the show. But, of course, um, 
Japan is not like Japan. The prefectures in Japan, 47 prefectures, are not like states. They're not sovereign. They're not. Um, um, but they are, they're like states in many ways. They don't have sovereignty in the way that states do, like, they have, like they're not quasi-countries, but at the same time they have their own police forces, they have their own local laws, and they have their own local assemblies. And in the case of Tokyo, um, yeah, there's a separately elected governor and a house, um, and, um, you know, as most of the, the country does, but of course Tokyo, I mean, Tokyo gets screwed over in the national votes because, you know, the national election, because it, it's so underrepresented. It only gets one quarter the representation per person of people in the most rural prefectures like Totori. Um, that said, some interesting stats put up by NHK just on, on, on the election results site. This is super interesting. Nationwide, the uh, representation of women in local assemblies, uh, when I say local, I mean prefectural assemblies, not city councils or anything like that. The national level is 88.6% men, 11.4% women. Um, this is largely because nationwide at the local, at the prefectural level, uh, the LDP, um, the traditional conservative ruling party of Japan, is the party that, uh, you know, controls most of those and they have almost no women representatives. Um, in Tokyo, um, actually in 2017, um, the numbers actually increased from 19 to 28.3% women representation. This was largely because 2017 is when uh, uh, Yuriko Koike, the, the, the governor of Tokyo, uh, who was a breakaway from the LDP, set up her own party and inspired many women to run in her own breakaway Tomin First Party. Uh, right now that party is actually kind of collapsing in popularity because everyone's pissed off with how Koike is running the Olympics. Um, so people are expecting that people abandoning the Tomin First Party, a lot of them, well, the calls early before the election was that they were all going to go back to the LDP. Uh, certainly it does appear that the, the, the Koike Party, who has been fought, fighting with Koike, um, the Tomin First Party actually wants there to be no spectators at the Olympics, whereas Koike is sticking to the national government and the Olympics line that there should be spe spectators. So they've been sort of worrying a little bit. But in the end of the day, Koike came out and said, no, 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 you should, still should vote for my party. And when LDP thought it was going to be an easy win, um, it turns out they're probably not going to do as badly as they thought. But certainly then whatever it is, the number is likely to go down. Typically, female representatives come from the Communist Party. Um, in, in this case, Tomin first, and the sort of more left-wing parties, which, uh, yeah, generally do better, at least in Tokyo, than in other places, but uh, it's probably going to look more than more like 2013, but we'll see. I mean, it's a, it's a, it was certainly a great trend that Tokyo is, I think, got the highest level of uh, female representation of parliamentarians, of local uh, prefecture level uh, representatives in Japan. Another interesting one... Um, Tokyo is, I believe, the only prefecture in Japan. Is anywhere else have zero? These represent um, the number, the percentage of seats in each uh, prefecture, which are uncontested. This is a problem in a lot of rural prefectures that they just can't find. You talk about the problem of women representation. What a lot of people say is that women don't even run. And in fact, in Gifu Prefecture, 47.8% of all the seats are, have nobody running except for like the one person normally from the LDP who, who just gets it by default there these are the the percentage of seats that are uncontested um, Okinawa 25% of the seats are uncontested um, so again hard, uh, nobody is is basically into it nobody actually even runs for local representation in most of these things Tokyo is the only prefecture in the country where every seat is contested um, so that's a good thing for Tokyo, I guess. Um, and earlier in the evening, when there were uh, the the early signs, and I guess this is actually now kind of pointless. We are we are now down to sixty four seats left, but you can see from these dots, the the green dots are the the Koike Party, which is expected to lose a lot of seats this time. The red dots are the traditional powerhouse LDP, and you can see they've already got some seats, including all the Tokyo Islands, um, Chuoku, which only has one representative. Not so many people live there. Kodaira. Um, but yeah, Komeito is the uh, government, is the LDP ally party. They're basically like social democrats, they're, they're, except they're Buddhists. Um, whether they're Buddhists or not is also good. They're from the Sokogakai sect, although they're because of the rules that you're not allowed to have religious political parties in Japan, they claim that they are totally nothing to do with that religion, although that's what they are. Um, then you got the communists uh, in purple, and they actually, uh, even in the early seats, the first people to be decided in Setagaya and Ota there, the biggest, the most populous wards in Tokyo, the, the first winner, the easiest winners, were the incumbent communist representatives. Communist parties always do better in the cities, 
And in Tokyo, yeah, there's a lot of districts where, yeah, communists are the, 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 the number one representatives. Um, Tachimin, the blue one, this is the main uh, national opposition party, the Constitutional Democratic Party that's been doing awfully, but they're actually doing quite well in the election tonight, relatively speaking. So, yeah, they're, 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 they're showing up okay. Um, and then uh, no party. But right now, anyway, I'll show this map at the end of the evening. But, um, yeah, the signs are at the moment that Tomin first, the, the Koike's party, is not going to collapse as badly as some people thought. Jiminto, which was uh, LDP, which was expecting to get uh, like 50 seats uh, out of the 127 up. Um, yeah, they've dropped their expectations to 40, and some are saying they might not even make it to that. Um, Suga did not actually campaign for the LDP. The Prime Minister did not show up in the Tokyo elections to campaign because local LDP members were worried that uh, he would be booed at public appearances. And also the national government was worried as well about the image of having the Prime Minister show up at, you know, um, at, at sites around Tokyo on TV and being booed by Tokyo voters, particularly with the national election now less than two months away. Um, so, and this is another thing, this is the most interesting thing about the Tokyo election is that, um, yeah, it, it's basically the, the last big election before the national election, and this could really show um, how Suga's likely to go in the, the national election. And right now it's looking like uh, they were expecting to do a lot better than they are, so that is super interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll come back to this at the end of the show and we'll see the results. But um, yeah, the main expectation is that um, it turns out that the Communist Party um, and the, um, surprisingly, the Constitutional Democrats, the CDP, is going to probably do better than was expected. Uh, the, the Communists, it looks like, were actually going quite strongly. Um, the, the CDP and the Communists actually agreed to coordinate where they wouldn't uh, run candidates against each other and split opposition votes in seats so they've actually coordinated to try to maximize their their seats and looking at the results so far it seems to be working so that's super interesting um the other background to this by the way is of course koike uh she actually went into hospital last week uh the she, she and she's been back on the news but she is not her normal energetic self at all she's been very very frail and apparently it's uh, collapsed from overwork is what's the, the the official line some people i've seen people speculating randomly without any basis that oh maybe she got corona or something like that but no it appear apparently it is actually um she's collapsed from overwork and was hospitalized from it and she seems pretty fragile at the moment but she did come out and say yeah everybody vote for Tamim first don't vote for those ldp a-holes who are going to block her if they come into power and that would essentially be the situation that you get you know in any government where if you have people vote for people who are against the governor just nothing will get done or work um so, um, yeah, yeah, and of course, I mentioned last week, Taro Aso, of course, said, oh, that was her own fault, um, which, again, probably contributed to the uh, collapse of the prospects of the LDP in Tokyo. Um, so, yeah, trust a, trust a Kitakyushu politician to ruin the, 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 um, the stakes for the LDP in a place like Tokyo. This is, yeah, he was one of the most unpopular prime ministers since the post-war period. So anyway, that's what's going on in Tokyo. We'll come back and check the results at the end of the show. There, there, there are 59 seats free, so probably, yeah, by the end of this in half an hour, I expect most of the seats will be clear at that point. Um, just taking another peek right now, if I bring this over here so that you can see, LDP is... Um, oh, oh, in fact, you can see down here. So look at that. Tomin's got, tw got 21, uh, and LDP has got mm, 17. Although they have won six new seats, i.e. they've taken six seats off Tomin. So they are doing okay. But yeah, um, also interesting that you can see the Purple Communist Party there. They're on 12. Komeito actually not doing too bad on 12 either. So yeah, we'll see how they go by the end of the evening. Anyway, I'll come back to that. Inter a little longer than a few minutes later. Time. Oh yeah, election results. I said I'd show the election results. There are 28 seats left, uh, according to that. So um out of 127, there are most seats are now settled. And how is it going? Um, look at that. Tomin first is uh, doing pretty well. Um, really surprising, actually. So they are actually 21 to 27. Of course, they 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 they're coming in with 45, um, 28 to 21. But uh, LDP is expected to make gains, but their hopes of getting to 50 look like i mean they'd have to get every single seat remaining in fact even if they got every single seat remaining they wouldn't get to 50. 
uh, and they're not going to get every single seat remaining. So LDP clearly, if they, and, and, and for those of you who are interested, when you look at the results later on, if LDP does not get to 40, if they get like in the 30s uh, at the end of this, which looks like where it's going, that would be considered a disaster for Suga and the national government going into the national election in the next wee while. So that's interesting. Um, the communists have won three extra seats. Ain't no party like a communist party. Um, yeah, they, they've done pretty well. Uh, and the CDP has won five new seats. So they've actually gained... Uh, interesting that the... Uh, so it looks like the people who have profited from... Tomin's fall have been six seats to the LDP, although they're expected to take more of them. Five to the Buddhist party, which is interesting because there was talk that they might not do so well. But there again, when you're members of, I mean, you're not supposed to say that they're all members of a religion, but they are members of a religion. They're going to show up and vote. So, you know, they've got a stable constituency. So they've gained a little bit. But the CDP, which I thought was finished, a lot of people did. This is interesting as well. The Ishin no Kai, basically the Osaka First Party, the We Want to Be Osaka Party, has a representative. I don't understand why anyone in Tokyo would vote for the Osaka Party, but some, some crazy place did. So let's go have a look at the map. Let's see what we're doing. So uh, where I live, huh, where I live, there, uh, there is no LDP representation. Um, limited number of seats. In fact, a lot of places, the red dots are LDP. And where I am, there are only two seats and three candidates running. And uh, yeah, they are not. It turns out LDP got third place. They didn't, they didn't get represented. So a lot of green dots when people were not expecting that. The purple dots are the communists. Um, so super interesting. Oh, look at that. Otaku. Ota, Ota is where apparently someone in Osaka, in, in Otaku, wants it to be. Uh, I mean, they get the, the, so the first seven, the top seven ranked candidates um, get to be um, uh, represented. So, you know, pretty easy to get represented relatively in Otaku, but one of them is like the Osaka First Party. So that's an interesting thing. So, yeah, there are 28 seats to go. But I'll tell you what, when you check these results at the end, I would say Tomin hanging on the way it is is pretty remarkable and between them and the, the communists and the cdp which are basically the national opposition um if they get in yeah it looks like it's been pretty bad for the ldp surprisingly good for the uh Komeito party so yeah that's where it's at at tokyo at the moment oh i just realized that's not in frame there i'm gonna move this across um so yeah the, the green tomin doing surprisingly well uh ldp not looking like they're going to get to 40 at all so that is interesting um let me bring that down there 28 left to go uh the buddhists there the the 18 are doing surprisingly well communists doing surprisingly well in fact they look like they're going to exceed their 18 from last time and the cdp which everyone had written off uh looks like they're gonna they've already exceeded the number of seats that they had so they're doing pretty well as well so interesting night anyway uh, you'll see all the commentary on it remember you can follow me on twitter uh, if you want to keep up and chat with me during the week or whatever, I don't mind DMs and stuff like that. Thanks to everybody who left comments, and particularly people like Dan H and Kerberos Tenshi. If you recommend videos, yeah, I, I went and watched them, and they were good, and I'll talk about them next week. So thank you for the recommendations, as always. Uh